Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and to another episode on my Porsche 924 Safari. In the previous episode, we completed the installation of the lights, and as you can see, I now have the covers back on them. They are working as they should, so I'm very happy with this, which means we can move on to the next thing. But first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for the lovely comments on my previous video. Um, I know that video was a very long time in the making, but I really appreciate the fact that you all enjoyed it and that you are glad the channel's back. And that obviously motivates me to make the next video, which is all about the dashboard and getting this last piece done before I go to the roadworthiness. So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to tackle this antenna. Then I will do the wiring for the radio because I already have the speakers in the back. I just need a speaker and the dashboard here. But once I have the, the wiring done and the radio functions and does what it should, then I can bring the dashboard in and then we can button up everything. And the other thing I need to do is I need to go underneath the car on the suspension and just make sure everything is stalked to spec because I know some of the things I didn't do back then, such as these castle nuts on the axle stub ends. I know they have to be done, but I want to do a check through the whole car, make sure everything is torqued the way it should be torqued. So um, sit back, relax, and let's start working. Before I start drilling, let me take you to the 968 because there I can show you exactly what needs to happen in this area of the car. So on the 968, you can see right here, there's a little plastic cap with, with two screws. Underneath this cap, there's a hole that goes through this little scuttle panel. So if I remove this cap, you can see what it looks like underneath. Basically, you can just use either self-tappers or something to that extent to keep the cap in its spot. And this little wire here is what you're also seeing on my 924. Um, this plugs into another little wiring harness that you can see flowing down into there. Um, so what I need to do on the 924 is I need to drill a hole here and I need to drill a hole in the body over there. And the challenge I have is that this little cap, even though these cars look similar, they are not similar, they are quite different. This cap doesn't work on the 924, so let me go and show you. So if you look on the 924, you can see that this area is quite a bit bigger than on the 968, but also it's lower than on the 968. And there's this little peak that, that sits on top of here. So I think the 968 actually runs parallel or runs even to the stop section all the way out, whereas the 924 takes a little dip. That means that this cap that I wanted to reuse on the 924, unfortunately, if I put it in the same spot, I've got about three or four millimeters worth of space down here that it does not cover. So I think I have no option other than to, for now, at least run without a cap. I'll see if I can make something that I can 3D print that can function as a cap for here because you want to keep this thing dry but for now i think what i want to do is i want to measure out roughly where i need the big hole to go and i'll use this as a template and then i'll draw that hole and then we can start getting the antenna into the car one hour later all right so i think what i'm going to do for now is i'm not going to draw the hole here because i'm not quite sure how i want to solve this problem so for now, I'm just gonna allow the cable to dangle down here. I'll try and somehow stabilize it here that it doesn't do anything. Uh, maybe I could put a bracket, uh, maybe I could do that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the hole in the firewall up here. The 968 has it sort of kind of here. But looking inside the car, I can do this one quite a lot higher. And I'll show you what I'm thinking. So I think the best bet would be for me to drill the hole through this spot here um, and let it come through here because it has to be hooked up to this little amplifier. It's a 944 part as well. And this amplifier has to have a ground and then the little cable from the window plugs in here. And then this goes all the way down to the radio with this traditional uh, antenna plug. But for now, let's drill the hole and then I'll figure it out from there. Oh, 
All right, now that I have the hole drilled, it's time to protect the metal that it doesn't rust. That should do it. A lot of boring math later. All right, so I've been doing a lot of measuring, thinking, overthinking, measuring again and thinking and trying. And what I've ended up with is that I am going to drill a hole, but I'm not going to drill it here. It just doesn't feel right to do it there. It feels a lot better to drill it here. It feels like a more natural spot for it on this car for some reason. Um, I might still look into making a 3D printed cap that works here. I don't think you need the cap. I think the cap is there more for... Um, aesthetics than it is for functionality to be honest because if you look at the cable you can see it's got a little o-ring on it which means when you plug it into this guy where is it when you plug it into this guy which is the socket it goes into this should be watertight there should not be any water coming in here so i think if i get this to sit down there it'll be a nice and natural spot for us that the cable can reach into the car um, so that means i have to now uh, do the final measurements here and drill a hole of roughly 18 millimeters into this little panel and uh, obviously I only get to do this once because I cannot hide it so it's got to be good maybe I'll go get a cup of tea and build up some courage but uh, I think this is the way to solve it a little longer than a few minutes later So you can see I made a cardboard template to just help me center the hole roughly between all the things that are happening in this area so it looks nice and tidy. That's what this little spot you see right there. So I'm now going to center punch it and then we are going to start drilling the hole. That should do. Now to make it bigger. So I need a hole of roughly 18 millimeters. I'm at 12. Yep, 18. So I'm gonna deburr the hole, protect it for, from corrosion, and then we can get this cable in. Alright, the cable is in, um, and while I was in here, I also restored this little bracket, so it's been repainted and it's got some new hardware in there. I've got new hardware in here for the battery, and this cable has also been refurbished, so it's nice and shiny and clean again. And I have reinstalled these little stoppers. Um, in this windscreen, it's not going to do anything, it's kind of pointless. I might have to have some of these made that are bigger um, so that it actually does hold the windscreen in its place. That's the, that's the reason they are here. I don't really think you need them, but um, I'll see what I can do to make this more functional again in the future. I've also installed the one on the other side. So the next thing now is I need to put the battery in and then we will start on the inside. Welcome back to the interior. And as you can see, I have a Bremen SQR 46 DAB radio that I bought for this car from Blaupunkt. This is obviously a very nice upgrade over what came in this car standard. The only thing I'm a little bit unhappy about is the fact that I only have a central front speaker that goes right there. But other than that, this is going to be a great upgrade and it's going to be the first time that I have a proper radio in any of my transaxle Porsches. 
So in order for me to wire this radio into the car, I have received this little plug with her pigtails and I've actually got two. One is for the speakers, but this is the one that's most important for now. Um, I can already tell you that this pink one, which is a radio mute button, we can delete. We do not need that. Um, then if I go on to the yellow one here, I need this one. This is a permanent 12 volt. I think I can just get it from one of these little red cables, which is feeding my cigarette lighter. Then I have to go to the blue. The blue is the antenna wire. So this is if you have a power antenna. Uh, and in this car, I don't have it, but I do have this amplifier. And if we go to the amplifier, just get down to this piece here. This is where the power to the amplifier goes. So I need to then change this little plug and put the blue uh this blue wire into that plug then we can give power to the antenna then black is ground you see how annoying this is right with my lights blue was ground and black was power so there's no more standard in this world but anyway um then i go to uh red red is the ignition so that's when i and the, the ignition i should be able to find somewhere here as well i'm not quite sure where and then the last one is illumination. I think that's probably the toughest one. And I have to think whether I want to do this because that means I have to go all the way down to this switch where, there, where this wheel is and figure out which um, cables come from there. So I know what to do with most of these except for this orange wire. So I'll let that stew for a while and then um, I'll come back to it. Um, so I'll hook these guys up now, then I'll do the speaker wires, and then we can plug this in and see if we have a working radio. Many, many minutes later. Okay, so as the story often goes with this car, um, while I was doing the radio connection, I discovered some dodgy wiring from a previous owner that I didn't very much like. So I've cleaned that up. You can see that I've uh, inserted some wires here, which will make the car actually a lot better. Um, I have my single uh, central speaker wire here still. I haven't hooked it up um, because I first need to install the dash. But as you can see, the radio is now fully connected. Um, what I still need to do is I need to install the DAB antenna up here somewhere. And I also still need to wire in the microphone, which I think I'll probably just put on top of the steering wheel. I'm not sure. Um, but it's working. Um, unfortunately, I can't play music for you because um, copyright and all those things. But trust me, it's working. It's sounding really, really well. Uh, even with three channels, it'll be fine. Um, I'm still considering how I'm going to add the fourth channel. I have a parcel shelf down here. Maybe I can put a speaker that points to the bottom there. Might work, might not work. I don't know. I still need to wire this guy up. Um, I haven't got FM, um, so I need to fix that. Right, so I'm quickly going to do the DAB antenna there. I'm going to do the microphone from there that it goes through here. Then I've got both of the cables down below here. I'm going to disconnect the radio and then it's time to bring in the dashboard. Okay, so that didn't quite work out as planned. Um, I stuck the aerial on there, but it looks like crap. Um, so I'm going to look for a better aerial, one that's actually black, because this one is silver. Which means you see it through the glass and it doesn't really look nice. Um, and then I wanted to put the microphone here, but then I remembered most cars put them here. And that's where I've now wired it into. There's enough space there, so that should be fine soon after all right so we have one job left to do before i can bring the dashboard into the car you can see i've got a rope hanging here that is to replace the speedometer cable the one i had was a little bit iffy so i ordered a new one that'll be going in right now and as you can see over here i have replaced all of the foam also right at the back there with the part that goes under the body um so this should have a nice seal going forward um, you might have seen in previous videos already, I've replaced the old um, sound deadening with new modern sound deadening. That should work a little bit better. I might still stick a few panels down here as well. And let me just show you. So this area is now nice and clean. You can see the foam sitting there. I removed the old bitumen that was sitting on the edges here. 
and I have already prepared the cap with new bitumen rope, I guess you can call it. So that should create a watertight seal. So I'll get the speedometer cable pulled. I'll get this in. I'll get the HVAC hooked up again, and then we can bring the dash. Um, it was a little bit fiddly with the new foam, but she's in position pretty much as good as she's going to be for now. And if we look inside here, you can see all that new foam and nice, how nicely it's sealing to the heater box. So um, the next thing for us to do now is to make sure that all of this ducting is in its spot. And I need to still stick this amplifier to the to the body but there's enough space up here as you can see so that'll all work out well so i'm just going to crack on with this now and hopefully it won't fight me and we'll be done with this reasonably quick all right so i have now installed all the ventilation tubing if you look down there you can see this is for the driver's side and if we look over here you can see this is the passenger side hose going into the vent. So that's all done. This one's already connected up. So we now have all the vents done. So with that done, it's time for me to pull all the wires through the dash. And then we'll start tightening up the nuts and the bolts. All right, so I've got the cables through and you also saw me tightening this nut, that screw and that screw. So now the top of the dashboard is pretty much in place and you can see it's sitting really solid. So the next job for me to do is to go into the corners over there and over there to tighten the screws on the bottom of the dash. And then the dash is pretty much in the car and then we can start building up all the details. So one of the things when you order a new dashboard from Porsche is that they tell you to also order a new glove box lid. The reason for that is because the grain matches the new dashboard and you have the possibility that this does not. So you can see if you look at this dashboard lid, this is what comes out of my car. It is a finer grain than the one that's now going into the car. So this is a late series dashboard style and this is the more early series dashboard style. So in order for me to exchange these lids, I just need to knock out these little pins and then I can get this lid onto that and then we can get this glove box into the car.
So what I thought would be about a 20 minute job turned out to be about a three hour ordeal to get this thing into here sitting properly, which means I have even spacing all around and it actually locks properly because um, everything's just a little bit different. You can hear it clicking there. So this is now looking good. So let's move on to the center console. The center console is now mostly in. I've had to reroute some of these wires to make them tidy. And you can see I've also bundled them up to make them nice and tidy. This one has been wrapped with tape so it doesn't rattle inside the dash. But what I've discovered on this new dashboard from Porsche is that someone in the factory did not do a very good QC because I missed the hole down here that I had to drill. And I just discovered that the holes up here are not in the dash either. So I'm having to drill them as well. Um, let's hope that's the last one of the things I discover because this is eating time and I literally have about 20 hours before this car gets picked up. So I need to make a move. the center console is in and i've already got the car on the trickle charger to try and beef up the battery because the battery has been taking a beating uh, the past couple of days with lights on and off and all those things so the next thing for me to do is move on to the binnacle and i've got a nice surprise in there All right, instrument cluster is in. So let me show you what I've done. Something I've wanted to do on a 924 forever. I swapped the tachometer and the speedometer. In order to do that, you actually have to reroute the um, cable for the speedometer through another path, which I just did. But now it looks the way it should have looked from factory with a tachometer in the middle. So that means we can move on to the last step and that's to get the beauty caps on here, get the column stalks on here and get the steering wheel on here. <laughs> Once all of that is done, we can pull the car outside and give it a wash. Okay, so it's four o'clock on Monday, the 1st of January, 2024. This car's pretty much done. I have a few more details to do, but I can now wash it. So let's get going on that.
finally, she's ready for her roadworthiness. She's clean. She looks absolutely beautiful. Everything has been checked. You can see I have the window washing system plumbed up all the way down here. I've got the wipers installed on both sides. So she is now ready for roadworthiness. The last thing I need to do is just install this little guy. And now she's done. Thank you for watching and until next time, goodbye.